Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today I first wanted to say a thank you and a I love you to everyone that is still subscribed to the channel. Thank you very much for not letting one person's opinion on a film decide whether or not you would continue to support them. The one thing that I've always tried to do on this channel is to be open and honest with you guys. I don't shill for anybody. I don't try and put reviews out there or say any information that is going to sway any person one way or the other when it comes to getting any type of sponsorships. I don't give a damn about that stuff. The only thing I care about is being honest with you guys, giving you my honest thoughts, and trying to break things down from possibly a different perspective than other people might. Does that mean that I'm always going to be, you know, in line with what you think? No. Does that mean that you're always going to be in line with what I think? No. And again, if you don't want people just telling you what they think, if you don't want people just, you know, being honest with themselves, being honest with you, well then this isn't the channel for you. And if you've unsubscribed already, well then I I shall see you later, hopefully, you know, if you eventually wake up and get your head out of your ass, or... Or if you are still around and you disagree with me, great. Guess what? I have no problem with any person that disagrees with me about any film. In fact, most of the people that I talk to, most of the people that I'm friends with disagree with me. Guess what? It's something that I'm used to. Why do you think I open up my video every single day with how I am the critic who is a cynic? If you think that that is honestly just a fun catchphrase, I was like, ooh, that would sound fun. I'm sorry, but that's just not true. The reason why I call myself the critic who is a cynic is because one, I'm a film critic. I love film. I love talking about film. I love analyzing film. I love deconstructing film. I love everything there is about the film world. And two, I am often called a cynic. Now, of course, I've gone on and explained this in podcasts before that I consider myself more of a realist than a cynic, but I will go on and take the name and wear it as a badge of honor because if you think and if people think that I'm a cynic because I'm honest, because I try to look at things through a specific lens, because I don't just try and let certain really cool moments in films cloud my judgment of the overall objectivity, you know, objective flaws that might exist in a film, okay. There, there, there it is. There's all that it is. Now, please, don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to attack anyone that disagrees with me. There are so many people who have reached out to me saying, hey, man, I disagree with you, but you know what? I respect you, and guess what? I respect you right back. I respect you for your opinion. The only thing that I ask for you to do is if you subjectively liked Endgame, please, for a moment, step back and think to yourself, were there some objective flaws that could easily impact this film? Forget about the awesome moments. Forget about those moments that made you reach out to your heart and, oh, my goodness, I can't believe this has been 10 years. Because the problem with this film, I think, is that so many people had so many hype, you know, so so much hype, so many high expectations for this that no matter what the Russos gave them, they were going to be like, oh my gosh, it was great because there was this sense of closure, there was this sense of grandioseness, and I totally admit and totally agree that there are moments like that that are there. There are good and great moments to be had in this film, and I don't know if that's something that got lost on the review I did last night. Those are just my honest uh, thoughts, but now that I've had some more time to think about it, the more I realize, no, I, I still totally stand by my grade of giving it a C. The more times I think about the problems I have with the film, the objective narrative flaws that exist in this film, which I can't get into without spoiling it, so that's why I'm not going to go into spoilers quite yet, but because of those things still exist and they will never not exist I'm sorry at the end of the day I cannot really support or like this film it's so funny to read some comments they're like saying oh you just hate the MCU and it's like okay where were you when I was talking praise about Thor Ragnarok which I still defend which I still think is an amazing movie when were you when I was talking about how Winter Soldier is still one of my all-time favorite MCU films when I was defending Civil War even though Civil War was not as good nearly as good as Winter Soldier I still overall enjoyed aspects to it you see, here's the thing. We have an objective point of view and a subjective point of view. And the objective point of view should be grounded in reality. The whole point of objectivity is to be based in truth. And therefore, there is only one objective fact when it comes to any reality. When you look to acting, when you look to writing, there are objective standards that you base, uh, you know, base your thoughts on. And so anything that goes away from those standards, guess what, are going to end up being criticized, you know, or rather being able to be criticized. But if you have a subjective point of view, that just means it's your opinion. And guess what? You have every right to your opinion. That's why if you have a different opinion than me, I have no problem with you. I totally respect you as long as you are able to admit that there are objective flaws. If you choose not to care about them, fine. Hey, that's fine. As long as you're admitting that, no, 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 I, I just don't care about that stuff, man. You know, I'm not a film critic. I don't really care about analyzing film all that much. I just want to have a good time. Hey, no problem with that at all. You can go and enjoy a film, and I have no problem with that at all. What I have a problem with are people that are trying to use their own subjective reality, own, you know, their own subjective, their own truth, their own personal truth, 
even though there's only one truth out there. Opinion is, you know, a wide-ranging thing, and we have differing opinions, and if you, again, subjectively like the film, great, awesome. But there are objective flaws that I cannot simply ignore. But also, there are objective flaws and objective positives that I cannot ignore, like the film being a huge financial success. So as you can see, Avengers Endgame is set for global domination, possibly even making as much as $300 million just in the domestic market, meaning if this film can get at least around the 600 to 700 million dollar range when it comes to its overseas take you could see a billion dollar film now i've been saying this from the very beginning i thought this film was going to make a crap ton of money i think this film is definitely on pace to make close to a billion dollars this weekend and also i think it means that it's going to be well on pace to possibly being the first film finally to break that record set by avatar several years ago which is still set at 2.7 billion dollars this is the film that totally could do it and i can understand why many people most people coming out of this film are enjoying it and hey I understand why. There are great moments. There are fun moments to be had. There are people that went in wanting something, you know, wanting one or two things. They got it and then they didn't care about anything else. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that if you enjoyed this film that you're ignorant. I'm not trying to say if you enjoyed this film that you are, uh, you know, ignoring, uh, you know, objective realities. What I'm merely trying to point out is that there is a clear difference between the two, but also that is where I stay grounded. If you don't like that, if you don't, I mean, I'm doubling down on my same, I'm doubling down on the review I gave last night, guys. I'm not backing down from it. And if you don't like someone who is speaking their mind, who is not going to BS you guys, who's not going to be, oh my gosh, it was just so amazing. And oh my God, I was crying and it was just amazing. And I'm not going after anyone either. I'm not going after anyone that had that reaction because guess what? It makes sense. There are movies that would have that kind of reaction for me. Toy Story 3. There were times when on that movie, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and overall, it was a great film. Both from my, you know, both from the objective and subjective standpoint. But at the end of the day, too, do not for a second think that I'm ever going to just totally do away with the integrity that I've tried to maintain when it comes to talking about films, when it comes to about talking about certain elements of films. It's the whole reason why I'm starting to try and get this new website off the ground is because I really do think it's important for us to know and be able to differentiate between objective truth and subjective thought between the fact that there are indeed objective film standards that we can look to, that we can criticize, that we can call out and say, hey, you can like a film, but you can't ignore these things. I'll give you a great example of this because there's some people who say there's no such thing as objectivity in film. Okay, great. I'll give you a great example of this. No one can deny that this movie called The Room, if you heard of it, Tommy Wiseau, look it up for yourself, is objectively one of the worst films of all time. It is terribly directed, terribly acted, terribly written. All those things are terrible from an objective standpoint. And yet so many people, including myself, subjectively love it. There you go, right there, one clear example. There are many others that you can point to that have objectively bad films or objectively poorly made and yet subjectively loved. When it comes to Endgame, I subjectively didn't like it, and a lot of that was because of the various objective flaws. There were some really cool moments, there were some really great fight scenes, there were some really great uh, character developments, and overall the ending to me had a lot of heart to it. However, just because you're able to throw in a few moments of awesomeness does not take away the three hours of just total and utter chaos that you bring us on along the way. So as I said, if you don't want someone speaking their mind, this is not the channel for you. If you want somebody who is just going to go and kowtow to the party line and not disagree with anybody, then there are plenty of other channels out there. You can go to the John Campions, you can go to the Colliders, you can go to all the people who are paid and you know bought and paid for by the studios. There are many other channels too that have the same position of I'm, you know, that just, you know, let's just, you know, speak my mind here that might actually have different perspectives than I am. That's why I love channels like Jeremy Kissing Gamers, Ivan Ortega, Jesse Milestone, Anna That Star Wars Girl, Nerdrotic, Doomcock, uh, Ethan Van Skyver, all of these people having differing opinions than I have about this film, and yet all of us can still come together and have a conversation because at the end of the day, we're speaking our minds. But as I said before, to me, the important thing is to not ignore reality is not to ignore the plot holes, is not to ignore the things that make this film very, very weak. And I personally think, because of those objective flaws, a poor end to this so-called Infinity Saga. I think a lot of this reminds me a lot of The Last Jedi, where The Last Jedi, it was all about subversion of expectations. This movie subverted so many expectations, and it did so, and in the process created plot holes galore. 
very similar to what The Last Jedi had. Now, I'm not trying to say The Last Jedi is as bad or that, you know, the, the, the Endgame is worse than it. No, not at all. I would say that Endgame is definitely better from a technical standpoint, especially than The Last Jedi is. But there are a lot of problems. The writing. Lots of problems with the writing with the various plot holes throughout the, you know, the entire film. The editing and pacing is all over the place with everything that they're trying to do with it. Again, these are objective standards that I'm pointing out. And you can say, subjectively, those didn't bother you, but you cannot deny that the flaws were still there. And that is where I will always come from with my film reviews. That is where I will always go to anytime I talk about film. And if you like that, great. If you don't, this isn't the channel for you. So again, for all those people that stuck around me, who have you know stayed true to me, who have said, you know what, I don't agree with you here, Odin, but you know what, I still respect you. I still respect the fact that you're not just going to kowtow to the masses. You're not just going to put out a, oh my gosh, guys, Endgame is fantastic. Go and see it, review. I appreciate you so much. And as I said, anyone that's giving praise to this film, I'm not saying they're any lesser. I'm not saying that they're any. I'm not saying they're ignorant. I'm not saying that they don't have any knowledge. What I'm merely trying to point out is, and I think this would be a great discussion, and that's why I cannot wait for my boy Matthew Kadish to see the movie, because that dude knows how to break things down, and I'm sure, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he'll be able to come back and say, yeah, narratively, there are a lot of problems. Deus Ex Machina being one of the biggest of all problems, especially with Captain Marvel. With all that being said, though, seriously, thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for the love. I know that this video is going to get so much hate, from the people that are either not subscribed anymore and yet still want to hate on the channel <laughs> because it happens. But seriously, thank you so much for all the love. Thank you so much for all the support. All the people in the comment sections who have just been so amazing. I'm not going to go through the comments because there's still spoilers in there. And this is still a spoiler-free review of the overall movie. But once again, we looked at the 796 likes, 192 dislikes. Many people have said they've left the channel. The My Social Blade says many people have left the channel. And guess what? If I was doing this just to get subs, I would never say anything that was worth a risk. I would never say anything that isn't popular. That's never been what I've done. That's never been how I've flown. And that's never going to be how I fly. If this was all about the subs, you know, trust me, the channel would be very, very different. This is about the fact that I'm having so much damn fun talking about movies, talking about them with you guys on the live streams and in the comment sections and everywhere else. Until that stops, once that stops being fun, then, then I'm gone. But as I said, this is a channel for people who want to try to talk about things from a common sense perspective, at least I try to, and someone who's just not going to BS you. So if you had a different opinion than me, great. I welcome it. I respect it. But please, for a moment, think that there are indeed objective flaws. Whether those bother you or not, that's totally up to your opinion, but they're still there. And until someone can show me <laughs> that they aren't there and prove that they're not there, which is impossible, then I will continue to stand by with my grade of AC. And if you don't like that, I'm sorry. Not sorry. I'm never going to change myself to try and make you and everyone else and all the 192 plus people who don't like this review happy. Never going to be that way. Never have been that way. That's not just how I roll. So once again, a huge shout out to every single person that's defending me on Twitter, who's defending me in the comments, who's stuck by my side, and has understood what this channel is all about. About common sense you know, thinking, about not being behind a, a corporation, by not shilling for movies and constantly just trying to get the clicks and get the likes. That's not what I meant. I could have made so many videos, so many videos on Captain Marvel, on all the other stories going on. I made so little in comparison to many other channels, and I'm not going after those channels because guess what? They are trying to grow their channels. I try to grow my channel as much as I can, but that is not my main focus. That is not my main, that's not my main priority. Again, this is obviously something that I do for fun. I have a day job, and I love it. I love teaching, and I do this because it's fun. And I think that it helps because at the end of the day, too, many people can come to me knowing that ah, this guy's not just doing it because he wants money. This guy's not just doing it because he wants to be famous. This is a guy who just wants to be open and honest and have great discussions about film, which I cannot wait to have with you guys in the comments. And also, if you have not seen the movie yet, as always, please stay clear of the comment section because trust me, they are filled to the brim with spoilers. And I will be having a spoiler 
filled stream tomorrow, Saturday night around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. But not before I have a stream today over on the Hey Viv channel. So go check her out. We're going to be on there in a little over about actually exactly an hour from now. Right now it's 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. At 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to be having that stream. And then later on, I'll be, you know, I'll be <laughs> joining Gary over on the Nerdrotic channel. And I'm sure Captain Marvel is going to be on the discussion because we have some disagreements. And because we're all awesome people in this great fandom menace community, this YouTube community, this YouTube family, we're going to have great discussions. We're going to disagree. And at the end of the day, we're going to be able to come back together and say, hey, but you know what? I still like you. And for those that disagree with me, for those being like, but you're just so wrong, hey, as long as we can come back together and say, oh, you know what, though? I still like you. I still respect you. That's what it's all about. So thank you again, guys, so much. Please like this video because, again, you know it's going to get hated on like no other by what I'm calling the MCU fanboys. And I know some of you would be like, oh, I don't think that's fair. But if you're a person where you're like, oh my gosh, you said something negative about the MCU, I have to dislike your video, I can't subscribe to you, what else really are you at that point? And for anyone that said, oh, why don't you say anything positive? You obviously missed my reviews of Alita Battle Angel when I was giving praise to that film. Why don't you talk about things coming up? I'm pretty sure I've mentioned several times on streams, especially that I cannot wait for John Wick 3. I'm excited for Detective Pichu. I'm decided for Godzilla, King of the Monsters. But obviously, those are things that I hope to be able to cover in the future. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.